brief introduction to who I am. Uh, my name is Matt Sinclair. I'm a teacher at King George Secondary School in Vancouver, Canada. Um, I am here on behalf of Sandrine Han, who was uh, originally going to be doing this presentation for you, but is currently teaching a class. Uh, Sandrine will be joining us shortly after she's done, if you would have questions for her towards the end of the presentation. Uh, I was the teacher who worked with Sandrine uh, at the high school where she was uh, doing the research. So I will be going through the presentation that she's prepared for us tonight with you. Uh, you feel free to ask me questions as well at the end. Uh, bear with me, this is my first attempt at ever doing a presentation in this format, so if there are little hiccups here and there, a um, little bit of patience would be fantastic, thanks. <clears throat> so to start with, this was a project entitled Through the Visual Literacy Lens on uh, to Learn Ecosystems. Uh, this research was an international collaborative project using the method of participatory observational case study. In this research, students, uh, high school students from Vancouver, BC, worked with high school students from Arizona, uh, Phoenix specifically, in the virtual world of VSER, visual, uh, sorry, virtual commons for education and research at UBC. Uh, students from two areas constructed their own ecosystems in the VSER. Uh, just continue. There, and visited each other's virtual world ecosystem to compare, contrast, and discuss the similarities and differences and uh, the many e ecosystems and the visual components in the virtual environments. Uh, learning ecosystems in a virtual world provides a holistic way um, for students to learn about uh, another ecosystem. They can be able to walk in the forest, swim in the water, fly in the sky, and observe the actual relationship between objects as opposed to the traditional way where they may learn through video or textbook work. To start, um, today when students learn about these ecosystems, they often do so in a textbook, very isolated, obviously, and uh, ranges of water. These are seen out of context and should not be seen separately for a full understanding. Learning the ecosystems in a virtual world provides a holistic way to experience the ecosystem and see the relationship between all parts. Okay. To create the ecosystems, such, uh, to create such <laughs> ecosystems, students also need to have a holistic understanding and uh, to and uh, to be able to construct the ecosystem they live in. This is this international collaborative project helps students to learn about another ecosystem and also rethink their own ecosystems. This uh, research is also about how high school students create their ecosystem learning environments. So, and how they will evaluate the improvement of their visual literacy skills and how to create the and how the creation of virtual ecosystem helps to to learn the subject area. The purpose of the study is to identify what students might learn through the virtual world exploration and construction experience. Identify how students learn in a three D animated world. Identify what kinds of learning experience a virtual world can bring to high school students, and to provide schools, teachers, and parents and guardians with greater understanding about the positive influence of virtual worlds on students' visual literacy and ecosystem knowledge in subject areas. Moving on to the research methods and participants. So our research questions obviously covered. The main research question is what kind of learning experience can a 3D animated virtual ecosystem bring to high school students? And the sub-questions are, one, how do students learn in a 3D animated virtual ecosystem through the virtual world exploring experience? Two, how do students learn in a 3D animated virtual ecosystem through the virtual world constructing experience? And what will students learn from other students in a site in an international virtual world collaborative project? I am the teacher who helped. Uh, yeah, I am the teacher who helped uh, deliver this class, uh, the art class. It was a participatory case study. Um, oh, that's perfect. The researcher used a participatory case study as the research methodology. The method includes observation with field notes, semi-structured interviews, and an initial survey. The virtual world uh, uses as content creators. The virtual world that uh, was used for this research was, was, was Open Simulator, OS. OS is an open source uh, software that hosts virtual world systems and the content are, is created by its users. Participants stated, uh, uh, participants stated OS is like a higher resolution for, of Minecraft. 
in the OS, users are able to create a more holistic, um, reach more, sorry, are able to create a more realistic world. And uh, as high school students, they really enjoy this kind of realisticness. The unit design from Avatar to the world. The first lesson was only about introducing the project. The second lesson was about discussing and brainstorming. Not until the third lesson the students, did the students uh, have an opportunity to actually start working on the project. Since this is a class project, the teacher needed to assign and ask students to work on different tasks. They were divided into four groups, visual reference, sound recording, mapping, game story design, and the creation group. The creation group students were playing, practicing in the sandbox before mapping group was uh, ready to realize or release the map. Other students, when they were done with their assignment, were creating their avatars. From day five to day seven, students started to work on the region they were assigned to. Day eight was a research day. Students were interviewed by the researcher. Day nine was the discussion day. The, the teacher and the researcher were hosting a discussion to conclude the project. Whoops, we skipped. There we go. Apologies. The first lesson was only about introducing the project. The pr second lesson was about discussing and brainstorming. Actually, I apologize. The, uh, there's a repeat there. There we go. Uh, when approaching my students with this project, I framed it as a way of representational painting or drawing unit in that I had to accurately depict the subject matter of the natural world one must become very observant in understanding of the subject matter. If I was to do a painting of my local environment, I would want to know what kind of trees are around, what kind of animals live by, uh, nearby, and what kind of buildings I have in my surrounding. We easily go about a day without paying much attention to our surroundings and often take for granted what we think we know about them. Thus, my students researched and collected information about our area of Vancouver, what naturally grows here, what has been added, and what has been constructed here. For this class, it was a particular relief to be working with a material that most students are already comfortable with, which has little material cost and has a real chance for mistakes. Unlike other art assignments, um, there was many comments, I don't know how to draw, I'm not good at this. This project received little of that. The equalized, this equalized the field with, the, uh, with instruction as no one in the class had used the interface prior. Unlike doing other art class assignments, there where one may receive comments from students says, I don't know how to draw, I'm not good at this, this project received little of that, which was very refreshing. As it was a group project as well, students are less inclined to, to use the interface, uh, less inclined to use the interface, were able to assist with other manners, uh, such as collecting photographs or sounds, developing gameplay and the map. Along with this way of framing things, I could also choose an understanding of visual of virtual that looks to see uh, looks at how every book or movie has a virtual component to it. While we are rarely given the full story or the details about what's happening, we are able to create a world inside our head that matches the story we are participating in. This is the same for virtual worlds using digital interfaces. This will always be restricted by our senses, no matter how detailed or rich they appear, never to be re uh, replaced but for the real world, and as such, have a virtual component to them. At this length, it led us to Plato's cave and an understanding that even the real world is just outside of our grasp. Since sharing this project, I have brought, uh, brought, uh, brought to it the attention of all my classes the odd phenomenon of Vancouver having palm trees. Is this something, this never stuck with any of our students as being odd until last year when some of the students from Arizona commented on the fact that we have them in our virtual beach. Because they were present on our beaches, which have been manufactured to look like beaches in all other parts of the world. Very interesting. Are these now virtual beaches in a real world? According to the participants, Vancouver is a temperate rainforest. It is located on the west uh, coast seaport in uh, British Columbia. Vancouver is among Canada's densest, most ethnic, ethnically diverse cities. Uh, my school is located in the heart of downtown Vancouver. Students are able to walk from school to downtown into the forest in Stanley Park. English Bay is also walking distance from our school. Participants were in grade 11 and 12, mixed ethn ethnicities in the same art class. There are about 18 to 20 active students. 
Most of the students had prior 3D gaming experience. From the survey, the most popular games were Grand Theft Auto and Fallout 3. These RPG games and most other students, these are RPG games, and most of the students do report they had, that they learned something from the gaming experience. Most of the things they, they learned were about the story in games. He, only one student has any experience in creating a game. He used the, that should say, it says Cry Engine, a crisis engine to create games and was able to use 3D Max and other soft, related software. Most students were looking forward to this project. Uh, participants in hardware. Because there are about 18 to 20 students working on this project each class, there were a total number of computers we had was eight. Therefore, uh, most of the time, two students need to be work together. Two students need to work together on one computer. Therefore, only 10 avatars were active at any one given time. Two students brought their own computers, uh, along with the ones in class. Findings. Avatars. Not everyone in the class contributed in 3D creation and OS. However, everyone created their own avatar. Gender bias was the first issue discussed by the students. They wanted to create gender neutral avatars. However, the default avatar shape and the outfit can be found were gender specific. How do you want to present yourself to other people was another topic discussed by the teachers and the students. There were some girls who chose to wear very exposed outfits. Teachers asked for the reason. They uh, their only thoughts were that it looked good. However, when the teacher asked the guys to go with, uh, what they think about girls wearing any kind of outfit in the real gaming world, the boys gave the girls a very good lesson on the meaning of visual representation of their avatar. There were a few students who had never played computer games before. However, when they were creating their avatars, there was no difficulty shown. They were easily, navigate, easily able to navigate their avatar, find suitable outfits, and were able to change their avatar's appearance. It can be future research, how does the gaming experience influence how the digital natives navigate the digital realm. Through the game, I thought, uh, thought gaming experience was very important for the students to navigate their virtual world, but this research shows that perhaps we were wrong. More about the avatars, uh, experimentation with their avatars. Uh, boy created a very strange looking avatar and became a fashion between the boys. They pushed the, uh, many boys changed their avatars to look very strange. I saw them experiment with strange avatars with female outfits, making them more unbelievable. The tendency was to push the sliders in one direction fully towards the most odd looking examples you can see in the image above. From my observation, some boys were creating the world during class and they would stop and change their avatar at any given time. It may not uh, take long and they are still strange looking avatars. They will stop and begin working on the world creation again shortly after. Uh, they did not become attached to their avatars. Since many girls spent much of their time making their avatar look good, and many boys were trying hard to make their avatars look special. I wondered if they were attached to their avatars. However, their answers were no. And this is just a game for them. It was a t and with the time frame, they were not feeling attached to their avatars. It might be another digital native's characteristic. I was attached to my avatar and did not want other people to use my avatar, no matter uh, in front of me or when I didn't see it. However, these students might f have uh, too many experiences on gaming or forming their avatars. They don't really feel attached to their avatar. It could be another research to sh on how to do digital native feelings about their avatars. So who is the avatar that they created? Uh, the students' answers can be categorized into the three categories as shown below. The better me, the, the some students said they were trying to make a, rep, a better representation of themselves. However, during the process, they found they can make their avatar better than they are. Therefore, they changed their mind and made a better, better version of themselves in the virtual world. The inner me. Some students said that their avatar did not like themselves at all, but they were trying to make their inner self. Just want to see what their virtual world can do was another category. Uh, looking for the limits. The boys who made strange looking avatars were trying to see what the virtual world can do. However, they all had a visual reference in mind to match. Example, a character from a game they had played before. Since also asked if they could create avatars that were not human in form. 
and many students were really interested in it. I told them yes, and thinking to show them how to, uh, to make it, but they didn't really want to do it, just interested in, to know if there's a possibility. Instruction tutorial and self-guided uh, peer-assisted learning. When the researcher was giving presentations, she never showed the students the step-by-step -step on how to do things in OpenSIM. She had the assumption that students will be able to figure it out themselves. The researcher prepared 10 copies of the tutorial handout, but none of the students picked it up. Uh, when the students were using OpenSIM, they self-taught how to use it, since they are working in groups. They helped each other figure out how to do many of the things. Very few students ask questions, and most of the students prefer to ask the question from the teacher, not the researcher. Hands-on versus plan-on. Uh, the researcher provided sketchbooks to students prior to the research start and, hoped to see, and hoping to see students recording the ideas, thoughts, or notes in class. However, during the research period, none of the students actually took out their sketchbooks. It was very obvious that they preferred to work directly on the project. They wanted to play with the software they were planning uh, uh, when they were planning and learning. Collaboration versus working alone. Some students prefer to work in groups. They could help each other and learn from each other. There were three avatars working on building a car in OpenSim. It was amazing to see how uh, to discuss what to do and how to, uh, sorry, how to uh, do it across computers. So some of the students did definitely like to work alone. It's obvious that some students were trying hard to focus on their tasks. Other students were distracting some. Uh, uh, we're distracting them. But for those students who collaborated in this project, we're hoping to have the chance in the future to, to do something creative by themselves. When they said it would be nice to create their own world and see what each other wanted and can do. When a student was cr were creating a Middle Earth teleportation portal, the teacher stopped them because he did not. Uh, it was not relevant to the project. The silent team boys tried hard to catch their girl team member to or teach their girl team members to use OpenSIM. The girl was not able to control the creation tools. The two boys were trying very hard to teach this girl. They were not close friends. No. Sorry. The time spent on teaching this girl is not, uh, not what a teacher can do. The girl complained that she doesn't like to play games because she is not uh, able to control any game. However, she created a very sexy, this is Sandrine speaking, a <laughs> sexy avatar in a very short time. These two boys didn't give up until the class is finished. Peer teaching provided students the space to learn from each other. Self-assignment versus self-motivated learning. Since this is a class project, the teacher needed to assign students to do different tasks. Some students said they hoped they could decide what to do by themselves. Some students said there, were some, uh, they, there are some things they would like to do but were not able to do because of the assignments. Uh, they were assigned another task. Some students uh, said they solved uh, the assignment so, sorry, some, some students, they solved the assignment dif difficult uh, by working on the assigned project for some time and start to work on what they preferred to do. And they said it would be nice to create their own world and see what each other can and want to do. When a student created a Middle Earth Telp, that's a repeat. Uh, I apologize for this. The uh, we had some issues with the, the speakeasy earlier. The students uh, hope to create their own world to see what they can do with their imagination and where their creativity goes. There were some students who did their own research and found out how to create animation in the virtual world. Uh, I did not have the ability to create animation before they showed me that they did it, even though uh, it was not project assignment. The students were enjoying it. They failed a couple times, but they're happy about the end result. Okay, moving on, sorry. Uh, gaming, st story gaming and interaction. The students created a Mission Impossible style game for their story uh, and for their avatars. Even though many of them have gaming experience, they're not able to transfer their experience into practice. This research proved me wrong again that digital natives were able to apply their gaming experience into practice. The interaction design is, should uh, be based on a storyline. Since there is no storyline created prior to the creation process, this very limited, there was very limited interaction in this virtual world. Finally, during the closing discussion, one student said the story about this virtual world is that Vancouver is in foreign investment land. Therefore, in this virtual world, there is no residence to show the, the gloom of the actual place. 
visual representation versus visual literacy. From this research, students learned that the things we create might not be able to be, uh, be understood by viewers from a different background. They were not able to understand some of the creatures they had, uh, that the students from Arizona had created. However, they were able to read the descriptions, they were able to uh, understand and try to make sense of it. Students also learned that it is not easy to create in a 3D environment. They questioned the creations made by the Arizona students first, and after they tried themselves, they became much more understanding. However, the visual representation the students used for this project were recycled plants in OpenSim. They did not think it was appropriate and did not think that creating a similar atmosphere uh, did not and thinking they created a similar atmosphere of Vancouver in OS. One student who tried to recreate a few buildings that existed in real life found he really opened his eyes and to be observant of the city. Purely re recreating the city in OS does not link to visual literacy. Visual literacy needs to be guided when the students are working on the project. Meaning of visual objects versus authentic representation. Since this project was in a very short time frame, or a very tight time frame, students were not able to create everything by themselves. Students were reusing many objects found in OpenSim. Many of the objects were not even modified. One of an example is their own school building. The school building in the real world is a square-shaped building. However, in the virtual world, it was a big, huge barn house. Some students were not happy to see that the school presented like this. However, since they were assigned other assignments, they did not say too much about it. For them, uh, when I asked the students, do they think their visitor visiting the virtual world can feel the vibe and atmosphere of Vancouver, they were on firmer, on, firmer on the answer. For them, 100% recreation of the city is not necessary. When they feel they recreated the feeling of a city and believe in a way, it is better than the recreation uh, of the city. Versus recycle. Create versus recycle. When they are comparing their own virtual world to the virtual world that is created by the students in Arizona, they found their virtual world contains more recycled objects, students in, in, uh, in Vancouver. I asked them about their feeling of achievement, and they said recycling objects provided them a, great, a better feeling of achievement. Some students were complaining about the difficulty of the software. See more in the realness versus easiness section, they said. Um, Software to be able to create, reuse things in the virtual ma world made them uh, made them feel that projectly actually the project was actually not too hard. This project provided a challenge to the students, but not too difficult a challenge that they were not able to uh, have the feeling of achievement. Realness versus easiness. Many students like this project uh, because it, OS OpenSim provided an environment that they can create some realistic objects in a virtual world. They compare OpenSim with Minecraft and told me Minecraft can never achieve the realness that was shown in OpenSim. They are proud that they were able to create a pretty realistic looking objects in the virtual world. They also say that OpenSim was not too difficult to navigate. It is really similar to computer games they played before and able to apply their prior experience in OpenSim. They said the creation mode in OS is not the same as with other games, but it is not too hard for them to learn. The easiness of 3D creation was the key for students immersed in the project. Even though a few students find OpenSim is not easy to use, they lost interest uh, and they lose interest when working on this project. Most of the students agree that the easiness of this software would like to do more and would like to do more on this project. Importance of creation in this project. When I asked students what the best part of this, of this project, all of them answered the ability to create in the, in the virtual world. Students enjoy the creation project and are proud of what they had created. Um, students don't think the creation process had no challenge, but the challenge was just the right amount that they I would like to concur, uh, uh, continue on in, with it instead of giving up. The objects, objects they created might not be realistic, but they feel that they were able to make something out of nothing. Students consider reuse, recycle, modifying objects in OpenSim as creation. When they reuse and or modify objects, they feel they could contribute to the world. The creation process provided the feeling of achievement in OpenSim. Students said that they would hope to be able to work on their own world instead of recreating the real world and see what other people's where other people's imagine takes them. There was a girl really enjoying applying textures to objects without other modifications. However, she was very proud of what she had been able to do. Students all feel they had learned a lot through the process and would hope to have a chance to work on this kind of project in the future. 
uh, post-project class discussion. We spent an hour discussing what we had learned through the project. Many students were happy to have the chance to work on this pre uh, project. Most of the students hope to have more time to work on this project. Many of the visual learning outcomes came from this discussion. Students visited the Arizona's location, but not much. Most students learned about Arizona's ecosystem during this discussion. Some students learned about Vancouver's ecosystem during discussion as well. Uh, what did students learn? What, uh, what did students learn? Uh, what did you learn about building? Students found 3D building is not an easy task, but they, are en they enjoy the building process. What did they learn about Vancouver? They learned that there were some wild, uh, wild animals they didn't know, I noticed before that exist in the city. Oops, apologies, wrong button. Uh, they learned the building and architecture of Vancouver is very interesting. Some shapes and colors were not what they imagined. What did they learn about Arizona? They learned that there are many scorpions in Arizona. They didn't know about the sandstorms as well. Uh, we had a discussion on what uh, the sandstorms and what were the tornadoes, if you were to see the images. They also learned that owls existed in Arizona. They hadn't imagined that before. They were not sure why the animals... Uh, they gained, the students from Arizona had named their guardians, or the characters eco-guardians, which were actually the animals. They weren't sure why they had done that. Uh, what problems did they solve? There were some uh, building problems that took a long time for the students to fix. An example, there was a huge tree that could not be deleted for some strange reason. Uh, 3D building seems right, in, uh, right from one direction and totally wrong from the other direction. And the sound team worked hard to make the seagull sounds uh, recording, but were having difficulty doing so. The map team spent a good amount of time to come up with an idea on where to create, uh, uh, with an idea on where to create for visitors to feel uh, what Vancouver people would feel. To write a game or a story for this project was too hard to make happen. Inclusion. This project showed digital natives do have the benefit of learning te new technology no matter what they had, uh, no matter what, no matter they had gaming experience or not. This project showed visual literacy skill does not naturally come out when students are creating in the virtual world. Guidance discussion and cr are crucial in learning virtual literacy in the real world. Previous gaming experience will not help students to think about the story or game that can help visitors to navigate the world. They need more guidance for it. To conclude, digital natives can easily navigate and use new software. However, their prior experience, experience didn't help with their learning in the virtual world. In other words, they didn't really learn anything from the games they had played before besides the story. It shows the importance of teaching visual culture in an art education class. The importance of teacher guidance and leading discussions, students were able to really open their eyes and heart to see, think, and learn from the visual culture they encounter every day. Final thoughts. Ultimately, once uh, we started, everything was smooth and enjoyable. Sadly, there was not enough computers for everyone in every class. This did allow us to have some wonderful conversation about the nature of video game avatars, div digital interfaces, and virtual worlds. I greatly enjoyed this project and looked on, I look forward to working on another. Questions, comments, suggestions? Um, Sandrine will be joining us in a few moments, I believe, as well, if you would like to ask her a question. Can we uh, ask questions in voice? Do you want them in uh, chat? A uh, voice would be perfectly fine, I think, unless, okay, uh, yeah. First of all, I, I'm in Virginia. I'm a science teacher, but I also am faculty sponsor for our Unity Club uh, at my high school. And mm -hmm. uh, first of all, great job that you're getting your students to build. A um, couple of questions I had about um, some of your conclusions. First one, and, and I've known this as well, I think there's a big difference between students that play video games and that students that create video games. Um, we have 2,300 students, and a lot of my students love playing video games, but my computer club only has 10 members in it because I think there's not a lot of students that have the skills, whether it's 2D texturing, 3D building, um, whatever, really to build, okay, in uh, a virtual world. And it, it sounds like a lot of your students were doing the same thing. They, they really weren't acquiring um, building skills, so to speak, but that's fine if they, you know, if they were getting used to um, modifying and creating in a sort of second life sort of environment, open sim, 
Um, I was curious, you said you had one student that had built in the, with the Cry Engine and was familiar with 3ds Max. Did, did he create better than the other students that were just sort of video game players? I, I did find when I was observing the students working that he, because he had prior experience building in polygons that he was much more capable and knew how to do it. Um, the interface was different, but it didn't take him long to figure out where all of the features would be. Um, and he definitely did a lot more of the building work than other students did. And I would agree with you with the same observations that a lot of students play video games. But my school only has around 450 to 500 students. It's the smallest high school in Vancouver. Um, most of them play video games, but a very, very, only a small number of them would have any interest in actually making them. And uh, that was very apparent when we tried to gamify what was happening. Um, there weren't really any ideas. Even it was such a simple thing that's from the beginning of video games, you know, going around and collecting coins like Mario, um, that wasn't something that came into their spectrum of things to do. There weren't, they didn't even start with the simplest of things. They, they actually really didn't, they had a hard time thinking of how to do it. So, very, uh, yes, uh, very similar. Quick, quick follow up question. Um, because I was a little confused as to what, and I don't mean to monopolize the discussion. Um, what was the main objective? Was it to, um, was it the visual, the, the art part? Was it the ecosystems? Did it sound like the students got bogged down in, in avatar creation and customization? And, and I see that a lot. A lot of the tools that are coming out now allow you to uh, have, customize avatars. And I'm wondering if that's a mistake at the K-12 level because, you know, they, like you said, they're, they're going to come up with inappropriate avatars. They're going to waste a lot of time with that when the focus should really be maybe the science or the art. Can you comment on that? Um, from Just to go back to the presentation as well, much of the presentation was uh, Sandrine's um, from UBC, her findings. So from my side of things, the teaching of this, I did bring in the aspect of doing more of a, say, like a, a landscape painting or a representational artwork where you're you're learning about your environment or what you would like to make an artwork of and then trying to instead of doing it on a canvas or on a piece of paper we simply used a computer to create it so our computer screen became our canvas um, i would agree that the, much of the time once the students did learn about the avatar creation they did get bogged down by it they actually I, we only spent one class on avatar creation but as soon as any one student went down a pathway with that that was kind of more creative or more edgy or more um, just kind of attention grabbing, the other students immediately wanted to be able to do that too. Uh, I would say that if I was to go back and redo this again as a project, I probably would avoid avatar creation entirely. Um, make a stock avatar that's very gender neutral that the students can pick from, and then we go and let's go build a world instead. It, it, they are two very different tasks, right? One is a representation of yourself and the other is a representation of the world around you. It, that seems to make a lot of sense. You save a lot of time on on that, and you're able to really use your time for what you intended it for. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's not to say that the, the avatar part wasn't very enjoyable, and a lot of the conversations that came out of visual representation and visual culture, much of those were often more valuable, I found, than... Uh, some of the environmental research that we did. Um, probably the only shocking thing that came out of that was that the students realized there's a, a high level of artificial um, vegetation in Vancouver that's not from here um, that wasn't actually pointed out by our students. You know, the palm trees in Vancouver was something that they see every day. They never thought of it before. You know, snow a couple months of the year and a lot of rain, so why are there palm trees here? They can always go back and do that on their own time as well. Uh, Absolutely. Um, that was another thing that Sandrine didn't put in the presentation as well, that there were only two students, they were given opportunities to work on this in class. We had 20 classes to work on this particular project for my school schedule. That works out to be uh, about a month and a half. Um, only two students actually took the time to do any work outside of the classroom environment. So on their own mm. time or during lunchtime. And it, that would have been a fantastic time to work on their avatars for sure. Well, it's interesting that that seems to be uh, becoming more common anyway, just the neglect for the whole idea of working on your own and homework. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. heavily I, I teach, 
I teach undergrads, and, and I find that, that that tends to get by them. Mm-hmm. Whatever you, whatever they, whatever time that they're not with you, which means that you really have to use that time that they're with you. Like you were saying, you're trying to have them have this experience, um, you know, learning about the environment, and you can't do that uh, while they're busy playing, and then they won't do that part when they go home. But they'd be more likely to do the parts that they would enjoy more. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you already sort of addressed the question that I had um, just now. Uh, when you mentioned that the students learned the best in uh, when there were uh, embedded stories within uh, the virtual world, and so what I was going to ask you was if you could elaborate on your statement that this um, really shows the importance of teaching visual culture in art education. And I think what you were just kind of alluding to is that they have to really look at their surroundings um, where they live and be able to, when they're thinking about how to build that, is that kind of what you were talking about in the importance of teaching visual culture? Yeah, um, I'm going to try to do what you've been doing too as well, which is to add some text to this. Uh, becoming aware of the world around them. Uh, you know, they uh, they walk to school, they, they spend a lot of their time on their devices, and they don't often dissect what they're seeing. They just see it, so to speak. They're not, they're not looking in terms of an art context. Um, which is like drawing attention to the, the palm trees. You know, many of them have lived in the neighborhood for the last 17 years of their life and have never once questioned why there are palm trees. Um, when it came out in conversation, we do have some there are for an artificial beach, but um, Vancouver is often known uh, as Hollywood North. And if you're if you're trying to imitate Hollywood, one of the essences of California is is palm trees, and our school has palm trees on it partly because our school used to be rented for filming. Mm-hmm. And how are you going to you know how are you going to stage a school um, if it doesn't look like it's from California? Um, our school used to be for, for renting. Uh, making sense. Um, I also find that um, in terms of going back to the, the visual culture, um, that there is the, the element of avatar representation that comes out, you know, looking the drawing the line between uh, uh, entertainment versus the real world and how do we choose to represent ourselves in the real world when a lot of the student role models might be entertainers and drawing the line between and understanding where um, even if it's a video game character or somebody in animation that you are choosing to represent yourself as, ultimately that's a form of entertainment. And how far down the line do we go before we say we've gone too far and that should stay completely as entertainment? Um, some of the students made avatars that looked rather uh, highly sexualized. Some of them made them look very um, horrific in terms of, say, monsters or alien looks to them. Um, and uh, kind of engaging those conversations with students was also a part of visual culture that I don't think many of them had kind of looked at the history of representation for, say, the character style they were doing. Um, just, and even beginning down that pathway um, for many of them was a good starting point. Yeah, it, it definitely gets blurry. Um, edutainment is definitely, it feels like that is the product that all of us are now often trying to to sell to people is to, to we're fighting against a, a cell phone in somebody's hand or a laptop to keep their attention. So education has to be entertaining in the eye of the student often to, to keep their attention. Well, I think it's interesting that you bring up, you know, the way that they choose to represent themselves. And I find that even in person, the generation of students we have right now there's really no concept of situational appropriateness. Mm-hmm. You know, so they don't have that a lot of time, a, a large number of them in real life, and I wouldn't find it unusual that they wouldn't have it here. Um, I think one of the things I noticed after being at SL, and I'm, I'm just coming up on a year, is how quickly people will change their look. You know, they change their hair, they change their, you know, everything. 
and thinking about the girls at school, um, you know, uh, undergraduates. And this week their hair is blue, and next week it's green, and then they cut it off, and then they go buy new hair and put the new hair on, and <laughs> and they're just rolling from one thing to the next. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how much, um, you know, I guess the, the question, does, does art imitate life or does life imitate art? How much life is imitating the virtual world also? Well, the more I, I want to definitely respond back to say, too, that the more that they engage with virtual forms of entertainment, it, it feels like the real world has dissolved completely, you know. They're, mm -hmm. I, we did frame the, their social media profiles as a form of a virtual world and introducing this project to them because that person that exists on the Internet that they see themselves as is not the same person who exists in the real world, yet more and more they were having a hard, they have a hard time just, distancing themselves from that and uh right. it, that you know there's a continuum there that can flip from like you were mentioning blue hair from one day to new complete hair the next day and it doesn't feel like uh it almost feels like uh um that perhaps part of the enjoyment the students found in just working on their avatars is that the real world is often too static for them you know we looked outside every day to f look at what we were recreating and typically speaking with the exception of whether it was raining or it was nice and sunny out the world itself was moving such slow at a slow rate that there were very few changes that happened in our environment you know it was only a month and a half so um there were no leaves changing colors typically the flowers that were around in the time of year that we did it were the same flowers from the start to finish um yeah there might have been different people walking by but the buildings were all the same everything looked the same and so maybe to an adolescent that's not as entertaining as something that can change from day to day uh, matt could i throw up one other question here um one of the movements that's getting really big in the united states is something called project-based learning where mm -hmm. students instead of doing lecture and tests and so on they build something and I really like what you're doing. I mean, you're having the students go into OpenSim and build a model that's an ecosystem model or so on. Um, and I'm wondering if, if more of us can tie this in, because a lot of decision makers, to them, project-based learning is still, oh, go in your basement, make a birdhouse or something. A lot of the decision-making administrators don't see the modern digital tools, 3ds Max, Maya, OS, Unity, um, any of those sort of things as a new way of, um, of students creating. And especially the big advantage to digital is that it's so easy to collaborate and share your work. And I, I love that you're working with Arizona. Um, I think more teachers should do that. Can you, can you comment on uh, collaboration and uh, digital problem-based learning, project-based learning? Uh uh, a bigger side for me that has also become really apparent is quite cost effective, I hate to say. Um, I, I typically teach an art class that uses drawing and painting, sculpture, ceramics, uh, photography. And for me to do this real sculpture with my students, it can be very intensive in terms of not only storage, but the cost of it. Um, so it's something that I've always been in favor of, whether it be digital photography and moving from film to digital. Even though there's always a part that you lose in the tactile nature of it, uh, I think a lot of the conceptual learning is much the same. Um, you know, thinking in 3D on a computer is not much different than thinking in 3D in the real world. You're just maybe losing that tactile sense. Uh, the collaborative side has been really fun to, to work with as well. I think that what I put in the some of the presentation talked about the you know, the collaborative learning model that happens there where one student learns how to do something, they can go and show the other student. And that same student that they show how to do that new technique may know something that that, that other student doesn't know. And through that project, they often, you know, the exchange of knowledge, I actually found uh, more students in this class probably learned um, things that we either didn't teach them because we didn't have the time or we simply didn't know could be done by the software because they were learning in that collaborative project environment. Uh, it also, I think, meant that the, the overall quality of the work, because they were all relying on each other for this particular project, I think the actual quality of it was much higher than it would have been if somebody was to work on it by themselves or even in a small group. Because in any place where one person might have been, say, away for a, an appointment or illness or where they, their skills might have been lacking, there was another person who could fill in. 
Um, there were a couple of students who really didn't want to be involved, which was part of the research project, but, um, you know, their roles were easily filled by other more keen students and the learning that was able to happen for those students, I think, was probably uh, way more than it we would have found if they just worked on these independently. Um, the, you know, the, the digital tools that are available to people these days um, are, are fantastic. The, I, like I said just a second ago, the, the conceptual learning that takes place, I think, is, is the same as it would be if it was just in, um, in the real world. It's, it's no different if I do a drawing on my computer than if I do a drawing uh, on a piece of paper. Just the tactile sense is a little different. That's actually an interesting point because even among art students, they don't always realize that it's not the computer that's going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. That you actually have to know how to, you know, you have to understand, you know, art and the making of art in order to do these things on the computer in a way that's artistically aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. You have to be able to conceptualize it yourself first before mm -hmm. you're capable of making it. Right. And you don't have to be an artist to have that. My best friend's a physicist, and, you know, she's a very artistically creative person, <laughs> you know. But but you do have to be able to make, you know, to, to do it yourself. The computer won't do it for you. Uh, absolutely. Um, it's it, in... A lot of students were thinking that I, they, the computer would do most of the work for them and they would really just be telling it what to do. And it, it never works that way. You, you have to, even if you're using a lot of the presets or the standards like the students were using, you still have to place it. You still have to figure out the orientation of the object, where it's going to be next to. The relationships are involved. In isolation, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work. You've got to do that part yourself. So, And the computer doesn't know how to. Uh, thank you, and this has been my first attempt at a virtual presentation as well. So, thank you everyone. That was uh, very enjoyable.